I see you've been enjoying the stew. Quite a difficult choice, I imagine. Starve and risk being too weak to take advantage if an opportunity presents itself. Or eat and prolong the situation. Well, oh, well, it sounds like there'll be more stew ready in a few hours. Hmm. You sick bitch. <laughs> oh, well done. Oh. oh, you are a prize. Do you know, no one has ever held out this long before, not even by half. I'm going to kill you. By I, you mean we. And no, you're not. But keep those spirits up, there's a good girl. You are a blood-stucking whore. <laughs> well, you think me that stupid that I would kill you over an insult? At last you disappoint me. How would you like to play a game? Here's how it works. You tell me your name. And I'll give you the rest. Now you're thinking, what have I got to lose? I've already given up on the cold silence. And now I can give her any name I like. <laughs> but if the name you give me doesn't match one of the two that we've narrowed it down to, well... You'll get to hear three women screaming in agony while you don't sleep. I'll pass. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't match either name. But I'll give you another try, since I hadn't kept up my end of the bargain yet. Here, you have a drink. You really Enjoy. are. You really are an evil bastard. Name. How can you look at yourself in the mirror? Name. Genevieve. Well, a pleasure to meet you, Genevieve. Daughter of Merith and Darren. Oh, yes, we know. Is there not a single redeeming thing about you? Oh, you think you can change the subject with insults? You think that you are untouchable because your parents are already dead? But I know what you're like. The affection you build for those who have been part of your life. We're all prepared to die. Well, you're prepared to die. The others were prepared to die. Hmm. Yes. I did think about holding the promise of their lives over you for leverage. But you and I, we need to be honest with each other in all things. See, isn't it better this way? I tell you the truth and then you're free to let your feelings show. And as a reward, I tell you this. They died well. Fierce and capable. In fact, had we not known how skilled they were from the way you fought, we might have gone with too few troops to emerge victorious. So I suppose when you consider it, I owe you my thanks. <laughs> you, you're in league with the devil. Mm, interesting. Now, what makes you say something like that? There is no other way that God would permit a creature like you to exist. No, oh, do you really think God gives a damn about who, what and how? Oh, how quaint. You know, if I thought you were a religious woman, this would have gone differently. But you're not, are you? God does not need me to defend him. I'm not sure you even believe in God, an assassin of the Lord. 
not your style. It'll just have to remain a mystery to you. Oh, but it's no mystery to me at all. You see, there are only a handful of options and they all lead to the same conclusion. If there is no God, then we are on our own. Or perhaps there is a God and he simply doesn't care, in which case we are, again, on our own. Or maybe he does care and he sits on a high throne, racked with guilt and anguish over the cruelties that permeate our world. Yet he does nothing. Omnipotent? I think not. Impotent. And still we arrive at the same conclusion. We are on our own. I wouldn't expect a sign of evil like you to understand. Oh, dear. You mean, well, you think I might be an awful person? Oh, no. Perhaps I tru truly should can reconsider my life. <laughs> You disappoint me a second time, Genevieve of Mauritia. I thought you an intelligent woman, a worthy adversary and a worthy ally. Perhaps I should have killed you. I have no use for stupidity. Do it. Waste not, want not. You should kill me, actually. If not, I'll destroy you. Oh, really? Will you? I can't think of a better way to die. Well, you're right there. You will die. Well, we all die. But first, you will serve me. If you think I would ever help you in the slightest way. Save it. If I want you to help me, you will help me. Poor information leads to poor decisions and I control everything you know. But I don't need another pawn. I don't want another pawn. I want a general. It'll be a cold day in hell before I join you. Again with the religion. Hell, heaven, God, devil. If it all takes a cold day in hell, that's fine by me. Winter's not that far away and I am a patient woman. You think forging a hell in this world justifies your acts? Let me be the one to break it to you. It don't work that way. Oh, you're right. It doesn't work that way. You think me the devil? You see me an agent of evil? Open your eyes, assassin. I'm a woman, much like you. You want to see the wellspring of evil? Well, look inside or on the streets at your fellow woman or in a church. This world begets evil. Your God who created it, who created us in his likeness, there's your source of evil. You don't believe me. No, you think the Empress, she's the one to blame. She hurts people. She sucks away the goodness in their life. You sit there in your cell and lament how you've been wronged and how everybody's been wronged. You feel superior and enlightened. But what you fail to recognise is that I have given you that. You are a sick, delusional viper. And you are a meek, deluded lamb, holding on to a comfortable fantasy because it makes you happy, not caring in the slightest that it's just a dream. I rule, and in doing so, I delineate the greys. Do you know how many people die each month now compared to a decade ago? I have replaced squabbling with purpose. People need constraints. And I provide them. You provide fear. Yes, yes. 
at last we agree. But what is fair if not a woman's cage? Limits, boundaries. People need boundaries. Without them, they'll destroy themselves. People need hope. Hope? People have hope. Hope is like a weed. It always returns. You couldn't take it away if you tried. And that's what's so nice about it. It grows everywhere. From the fairest Eden to the darkest, most poisonous soil. Look at you. Captive, tortured, rotting away in a dungeon. You could have stopped eating. You'd be dead by now. But you endure. Why? Hope. One guard looking the wrong way at the wrong time. A slither of metal from the torture chamber that you can conceal just long enough to hurl into my eye. Hope. It flourishes in you. The barest hint that all the pain will be worth it if you can just. And you seek to destroy it at every man. Do I? Is your hope gone? Every moment in your torture chamber fuels my hope. Indeed. I know it does. Do you deny what your soldiers do? Could you be so blind as to think that they inspire hope? Now why in the world would I want to let weeds overgrow Eden? Hmm? One weed in the darkness is quite a different situation than an entire empire overrun with them. Think of my troops as gardeners. The lands must be tended. <laughs> Do you really believe this? This rhetoric? You can't be that stupid. Neither can you. That's why I intend to show you the truth. Your truth is the truth. Plain and simple. Comfort begets misery. Hate me for it if you must, but I didn't make it that way. You can blame your almighty God for that. The world is as it is. I am no more villain than a wolf that kills a deer. Nature's cruel assassin, you should know that by now. The wolf doesn't kill needlessly. <laughs> Neither do I. Hmm. You don't seem worried. You should be. Uprising revolts. They are like the swell of the tide. The day they stop, that's when I'll worry. <laughs> Most people would say you've got it backwards. That's why I rule and they serve. Why don't you tell me these things? Because you have the cast capacity to understand. Someday you will be my general and I'd be, I think you'd be rather effective. You're wrong. That's not what I meant. Why do you tell me what's happening in the world? Why wouldn't I? I have an opportunity to gain and nothing to lose. Suppose I were devising a plan of escape. This might help me identify a moment of opportunity. Hmm. Well, I expect you to be constantly devising and revising a plan of escape. You'd be quite the disappointment otherwise. But as for it providing you the key to your freedom, that's not likely. You and the rest of the world are separable problems now. That's why I so enjoy our time together. I'm... Separable. A ruler craves separable problems. Society is an intricate machine, a grand playing board that is carefully balanced on the head of a pin, and every lever pulled on the gears in some unique way. Raise attacks here, merchants shifts over there, farmers squabble to spill the gaps, and suddenly your governors start fixing things on their own. 
overseeing an empire is like juggling thousands of balls with each one tied to 20 others. It's almost enough to drive a woman mad. And then fate brings me you, an unexpected gift delivered right to my doorstep, a diamond in a lockbox, challenge, reward a self-contained puzzle independent from everything else maybe it's more than enough to drive a woman mad indeed but not this woman you'd be the last one to know i'd certainly be the last one to care but you're wrong i'd be the first to know rest assured my friend there's no one i scrutinize more carefully than myself Hardly well, seems possible to watch yourself more closely than you watch me, unless you've found some clever way to stare up your own ass. Mm-hmm. I have servants to do that for me. So, what are you going to do? <laughs> Check me to you, of course. I wasn't talking about this. And neither was I. The revolt. What will you do about the revolt? What would you do? (laughs) It's not my problem. Well, you think I'm here for civic advice? Please. If there's even a shred of possibility that some thought I might help you, I'd sooner die than share it. You're a coward. And you're a fool. You won't even try to solve the problem out of fear that it might lead you to agree with me on something. And you think that somebody someday I'd actually agree with you on something? Oh, it's not me you'd be agreeing with. They're not my rules. I did not create them. I simply understand human nature and the rest falls into place. Understand human nature? You, you're barely human at all. Humans feel, you feel nothing. People care and love and cry. Is there anything you care about? Do you ever lose control over anything? It bothers you that I value reason over emotion. Interesting. And was it emotion that brought you here? Did you wake up one morning enthralled with a burning fury and storm off to assassinate the evil empress? Or did you plan it out step by step? What skills, what resources, what path is most likely to succeed? Check. So what are you going to do? I'll let the revolt run its course for another two weeks. Earlier on, my soldiers will incarcerate, punish and eventually kill some innocent people. That will enrage the populace. What? Well, there's no point to a brush fire if it doesn't clear out some undergrowth. You've had your chance to speak and you declined. Once the people are passionate and focused, we'll begin to raid more precisely. True dissidents, the ones who are now emboldened to stand and fight, they will be killed. About two months from now, the leaders of the revolt will come forth. They'll talk of how they've been misled. How could you possibly know this? It's your move. You started it. Well, the leaders will claim that they were not really in charge, merely the rooks and knights of the true masterminds. And two. The ones incarcerated at the beginning? The innocent people? Oh, and so the uprising fades like an ebbing tide that has deposited its dissident flotsam on the shore before retreating to the sea. The people? Well, the people return to their homes. 
They sit around their evening fires and nurse their guilt for wrongfully hating the Empress in those early weeks. Look what we've done, they'll say. If we had but known, perhaps the other lives would not have been lost. It's a win all round the hen house. Guilt makes the chickens docile once more, and they return to laying eggs for the empire. The foxes stirred to action have been identified and eliminated, and the so-called leaders are never seen again. A fine reminder to everyone of what can happen when you stand against the empire. It's thank you. A lie. It's all a lie. Of course it's a lie. What's your point? The point is that you kill innocent people to further your own ends. You manipulate them. You you leave them wallowing in guilt just so... There. See? See what emotions will do to your thinking if you let them run amok. Will innocent people die? Yes, but who is feeling guilty? The people who rose up against the empire? Let's look at little William Wheelwright and Charles Candlemaker. If they joined into a rebellion, should they feel not guilty? And if they didn't, are they not rightly rewarded with a moral high ground over their neighbours? Innocent, innocent people die and again i ask what's your point it's not right it's not right oh do tell assassin what is right i simply can't help but wonder at your basis of comparison <laughs> still your move it's called compassion perhaps you've heard of it Check. Compassion, Geraldine, is an emotion, not a doctrine of conduct. Does the lion feel compassion for the gazelle? Perhaps, but she still eats it. It's not the same. It's exactly the same. A lion kills to survive. A lion doesn't want to waste what it kills. You need to expand your thinking. You imply that I kill needlessly but that is not true. Is this really all about meat to you? Would it all be fine to you if, if rather than letting the families bury their loved ones, I fed the carcasses to my hunting dogs? What well, gives you the right to decide who lives or dies? I'm the Empress. That's no answer. Yes, you're the Empress, but I say that means you have an obligation to protect people, not to hurt them. I do protect people. With a few surgical deaths, I prevent hundreds or thousands more. Some people would say that a purposeful death is, death is the ultimate gift. Is that not your very situation? Did you not come here to trade your life for mine? Yes, but I made that choice. You ask those victims if they were willing to die for your greater cause. Do you give them a choice? That's so noble, but the world doesn't work like that. Does a lioness ask a gazelle if it's willing to die to feed her cubs? Nature does not recognise sympathy. Every time it comes to morality, you duck your head under the covers and cry, it's not my fault, it's not my fault. I rule. But it's the world that makes the rules. You seek fairness? Yes. Then steal yourself a disappointment. Fairness? <laughs> Nothing more than a fairy tale for the people who cannot comprehend balance. You know, I think I finally understand. Do you? You're no emperor, you're a steward. You can't change the nature of the world. How would you know? You don't even try. 
You're a fool. And you're a coward. It's your move. Do you concede? You've already lost. It's mate in three. See if you can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs>